Hello, this is Brother Abair. Thank you for joining us again for our Spiritual Gifts 101 class. Uh, today we're going to be covering the spiritual gift of ruling or administrating. Uh, we've covered several gifts so far and this is the final one. And so thank you for hanging in there and for listening in each and every week. And I hope that uh, by now uh, you have identified your gift. If not, this may be the one. And I hope uh, and pray that you have found your gift and you'll use it uh, for God's glory. But let's get right into it. If you have your um, your sheets printed or lessons to follow along, um, we can look at the top there and we'll see the description, the benefit, and the Bible example. Uh, the description, a uh, very quick description of the gift, is the gift of leading people toward to work towards a goal. Okay, And the benefit in the church is simply effective organization and completion of projects. And certainly broader than that, but at a quick glance, uh, that is the benefit. And then, of course, the Bible example that we're going to be using throughout uh, this lesson is the, uh, the man of God, Nehemiah. Okay, And uh, several times we're going to reference him and a couple other people, but he's um, probably one of the best examples we can use of an administrator. All right, so let's get right into it and talk about the spiritual gift of ruling. Number one, uh, under that heading there, letter A, the gift of ruling encompasses three qualities. Qualities, organization, administration, and leadership. All right, those three qualities um, kind of make up what the ruler or administrator does. Uh, letter B, the gift of ruling is the God-given ability to give direction, and make decisions on behalf of others that result in efficient operation and accomplishment of goals. Goals is your blank. Okay. Um, again, it's that ability to, to do those things. Uh, let us see. It includes the ability to organize people. Organize uh, people, things, information, finances, etc. I know this is most likely not my gift. Organization is not my forte, uh, but a, a gifted leader, gifted uh, ruler uh, would, would be able to organize just about anything. Uh, letter D, the often the mark of an administrator is the ability to accomplish things and using the scripture quotation to finish that sentence, decently, decently, and in order. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 14, 40. Okay, the administrator can do things decently and in order, okay? Um, those with the gift of ruling, you can kind of say, are like the human resources department of the church, okay? Um, they know how to put people in the right jobs. They know how to accomplish a task. They know how to organize the task. They know how to, um, you know, who, who's the best at what jobs, and it can plug people in where they need to be. And so they're the ones that help the overall operation of the church go very smoothly. They can organize big days. They can organize cookouts. They can organize, um, you know, potluck dinners. They can organize, you know, the, the portions of like a Christmas program, so to speak. All right. So they're the human resources or the HR department, as some would call it, um, in the church. Now, number two, uh, those with the gift of ruling often have a keen eye for detail detail. All right, take your Bibles now if you've, uh, you may have gotten ahead of me, which is fine, but First Chronicles 22, uh, 1 through 3. Um, First Chronicles 22, 1 through 3. Okay, we're going to read those passages here as soon as I can find it. All right, then the Bible says, then David said, this is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar for the burnt offering for Israel. And David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel, and he set masons to hew wrought stones to build the house of God. And David prepared iron in abundance for the nails, for the doors of the gates, and for the joinings and brass in abundance without weight. And there's a whole lot more that we could read, but what we wanted to look at here is the keen eye for detail that David had in administrating this uh, this project of building the temple. Of course, we know David was not allowed to build the temple, but God never said David couldn't prepare. And so that's what he did. And he administrated everything down to the, the very last nail that they would need, down to the very last um, you know, bit, of, bit of brass and, and things that they would that they would need. But uh, the 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 points underneath number two there, David couldn't build the temple under his rule, but he could administrate the process to make sure it was prepared well for his son. So uh, last lesson or a couple lessons ago, we talked about the, the giver. Okay, In this instance, David kind of did both. 
David gave and made sure, but in a, in a broader sense, really he did more administrating because um, that was he, he was pooling resources from other places. Um, next point here, they may also possess the natural talents of problem solving and reasoning, which it makes sense because they can organize their thoughts. If you can solve a problem, it's typically kind of like a puzzle. You, you do it from point A to point Z and, and you know which which things to do in order. And typically, that's how they're solved. And so, of course, they can solve problems. They know how to reason things through. Uh, they're very good at that. Um, number three, number three, those with the gift of ruling see the big picture, big picture, and visualize results. Let's get into Nehemiah now in chapter number four. Nehemiah 4, uh, 9 through uh, verse 10. So the, those with the gift of ruling see the big picture and visualize results. The Bible says, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. And Judah said, The strength of the bearer, bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. Okay, so we're, we're looking at a, a problem here, but the the and, and how this administrator handled it. But those with the gift of ruling, administrating, are unfazed by interruptions. They're unfazed by criticisms or even their own limitations. Uh, they, keep, they, they keep their eye on the goal regardless of these things. Um, letter A, Nehemiah exemplified this quality as he led uh, the rebuild of the wall of Jerusalem. Nehemiah kept his eye on the big picture, okay? Because there was lots of problems to solve. And so instead of getting bogged down by those things, too much rubbish, too many enemies, too many weakly resolved volunteers, okay? Um, the, all those things were bearing down on Nehemiah as the leader, but yet he was able to see the big picture. He was able to visualize the results. He saw the wall completed, the gates built back up, um, just as surely as he saw them physically torn down. Letter B, yet Nehemiah kept coming up with ways to accomplish, accomplish the goal. Nehemiah uh, did a lot of work behind the scenes. Nehemiah, you remember, he went you know, through the night and, and looked at things and kind of assessed things while everybody was sleeping. Nehemiah is, is plotting and not plotting, but he's planning and he's working to figure out how to get it done. And I do wonder sometimes as my, my mind imagines the story, you know, and, and some of the details there are surrounding what, what's recorded. But I wonder if some may have even questioned the way Nehemiah worked during the day. You know, like, what, why is he not doing more? Why is he not doing this or that? Uh, maybe wondering why he looks kind of tired. Well, that's what happens when you stay up all night preparing and, and you try to help others succeed. That's the administrator's uh, thing that they, they do so well. A lot of his work was unseen. Um, others without the gift, looking at the way an administrator views things and, and does things, may be discouraged and, or even critical thinking, why? Um, what's he doing to help with the project? Or why isn't he doing as much as I'm doing? But the truth is, we don't know how much really the administrator is actually doing behind the scenes. Most of the time, while we're sleeping, they're planning and, and mapping things out, and they're doing things that will help us be much more efficient. But if you have this gift, understand that you know people may not understand all the times. So we're kind of getting ahead to our misunderstandings part, but uh, don't get offended. Just keep working. And so, of course, Nehemiah kept on working. He saw the big picture regardless of all of the issues. Letter C under number five. The ruler understands the various factors involved in any work situation, as well as the practical, practical steps necessary to reach a goal. Okay, so he understands what to do. Right, the practical things that that they can that the group can accomplish. Letter D. This believer has a clear idea of the whole project from beginning to end when others can only see the present situation, all right? They've planned it out. They, they have thought things through. They've, cons they've counted the cost, as the Bible says. They've, they've plotted those things out. And so they understand what they plan to accomplish from beginning 
to end. Um, that's a good marker of someone thinking of the administration because if you're like me, you see what's in front of us. I, you know, do the one thing in front of you, okay, then do the next thing in front of you and just keep on keep on moving. And there's a place for that, obviously, but we need someone who understands the whole thing that has maybe foreseen the problems and, and kind of worked around those things and led us along the way. Number four. Number four, rulers tend to break down large, large projects into smaller pieces. Large projects into smaller pieces. Let's go over now to Exodus chapter 18 and look at verses 13 through 24. Exodus 18 verses 13 through 24. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from morning unto the evening. So a long time standing in line. Uh, seems like waiting to get to the grocery stores now. Uh, verse 14, And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Uh, in King James, that's, What are you doing? Okay, uh, Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning unto even? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another, and I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Not that judging is not good, but the way he's going about it is not good. Verse 18, Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice, and I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure. And all this people shall also go to their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. And truly, probably extended his life, because uh, can you imagine just sitting there all day long on this, on this chair, you know, judging, you know, um, you know, property lines, or judging, you know, if someone stole something from someone else, or, you know, judging great matters, petty matters. And so, um, this large project was broken down into smaller pieces, and, and it's very much similar, I would imagine, to, you know, the judicial system today. Obviously, there's the Supreme Court, and then there's the, you know, there's you know, provincial courts, and then there's smaller courts. You know, they have different courts for different size issues. And this is what um, was happening here with the children of Israel. And, of course, Moses got all the big things. Moses was responsible for teaching, obviously, and that would go a long way towards helping people resolve matters. Um, but then, of course, he had people over tens, people over 100 people. You know, they kind of sectioned them out. And so it took that big, huge job and made it much more um, manageable. So letter A, letter A, rulers understand that patience and care are necessary for achieving large and long-range goals. Patience, okay. Uh, long, long range goals is is your blank there, okay? And how we need patience, amen. <laughs> we need that ruler, that administrator to come along uh, for somebody like myself who's impatient by nature to to say, just hang on, keep working. There's a plan here. Work the plan. Stay faithful, okay. Um, letter B. They see the big picture. We we see that again. They see the big picture. And break it down into smaller tasks. The big picture. Okay, what what was Moses and what were they trying to do? Well, they were trying to uh, be godly people. They were trying to walk in God's ways, and and the way for them to do that was not to be standing in line from morning until evening. You know, they probably got into fights standing in line and had to get that solved. You know, it's just 
you know, they, they, they saw the big people say, you know, we, there's an overall task here and the best way to do it. And, and Jethro, Moses' father-in-law was a very wise man, uh, at least exhibited the qualities of an administrator in this way. Now, um, th there's a, a strange thing uh, as an illustration. There's kind of a strange thing, um, at least out in the more Western parts of the United States and maybe even in, in Canada, I would imagine, too. But there's these steakhouses, you know, sometimes in Texas or whatever, they offer these giant 72 ounce steaks and they're as big as your head, you know, and, and the, they tell you if you eat all of this and all of these things that everybody in your party's meal is free and, you know, people try it all the time and uh, it's like $100 and they usually fail and they have to pay a lot of money for a stomach egg, you know. Um, but the, the trick of it is they put a time limit on it. And the reason why they do that is they know this giant, massive thing with enough time and enough segmented out bites, just about anybody could finish something like that. You know, and the reason why I say that is this, the big picture can be overwhelming. The big picture can be, can seem like you can't even stomach it in, in a metaphorical sense. You know, you just, you can't stand it all. And average people without this gift can look at the great job, say the Great Commission, or see the uh, um, a missions project in a church or something like that and say, wow, this is so big. This is so crazy. I can't do this. The administrator can come along and say, listen, let's, let's segment this out. Here's the first step. Here's the second step. You know, and they would be able to bring direction to that so that those of us who are panicking, you know, <laughs> we can say, oh, okay, that makes more sense. I think I can do that. Um, so that's, that's their way of doing things. Now, Satan would love for us, as the Bible talks about, to sh get us to strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. In other words, spend far too much time trying to swat an insignificant gnat, going out, spending lots of time on something very minuscule and ridiculous, or trying to swallow a camel. In other words, spending time trying to do something that's impossible and ridiculous to try to do all at once. Um, an administrator can get us off of that and onto something that's easy to break down, simple enough to do. Okay, and so if you find yourself able to do this, you know, uh, there might be some Holy Spirit alarm bells going off telling you, this is you and we need you. I need you. Okay. All right. Number five. Number five. Uh, rulers are motivated. Motivated and responsible. All right. Uh, we have several scriptures here. We'll look at a couple of those. Um, let's look at Genesis 41. We're going to see Joseph in this, um, utilizing this gift or expressing it in a way. But Genesis 41 and verses 38. <clears throat> and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And, Mo and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphonath. I'm not sure how to say that. And he said unto him, and he gave unto him uh, to wife, as in at the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in, and in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food uh, in the cities, the food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name, <clears throat> excuse me. And Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh, for God said, He hath made me to forget all my toil in all my father's house. 
in the name of the second son, in the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And it, here's what he did now. And seven years, and the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. And the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all the lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, and the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith unto you do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all the countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because that the famine was so sore in all the lands. So rulers are motivated, number six, five, and responsible. Joseph here is put in charge of making sure the Egyptians were fed and protected from the coming drought. It was God who revealed to Joseph what Pharaoh's dream meant. And so, obviously, Joseph saw the big picture. He knew that seven years were going to be really good, and people would probably gorge themselves and not save anything up, and then seven years would be horrible, and people would starve to death and die. And so Joseph, seeing the big picture, added up seven plus seven and figured out how much would need to be saved to make it to where we, they would have enough in the seven years of famine. Okay. Um, next point, Joseph made sure that Pharaoh could lead could better lead without being bogged down by day-to-day -day details of food collection and storage and pricing and labor, etc. Uh, the, the, the empire of Egypt, the kingdom of Egypt, would have probably gone uh, to shambles if Pharaoh had to delegate all of this or trust somebody who was not qualified uh, to do it. And so God placed Joseph in there just the right time, and Joseph ended up saving uh, his own people, saving the world, uh, so to speak. Um, but this administrator... In this administrating role was not the head guy, but yet he did uh, free up uh, the, the, the head guy, Pharaoh, to, to do the other things that needed to be done. Joseph could do all this because of the cultivation of the gift of ruling during the trials that he went through. Um, so all the trials that he endured, kind of as a, as a mini message really, but uh, the trials that he went through, the betrayal of his, of his brothers, the, um, the, the being falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, and then being thrown into the jail, and, and then being forgotten about, and then ultimately being led to, you know, the guy remembers, and he says, oh, Pharaoh, I, I know this guy that can interpret your dream. All of those trials that, that Joseph went to was cultivating that because you notice that he got better and better as as he went along. Um, can you imagine being a prisoner and being so responsible that you can be in charge of the prison? That's just crazy, but that's how it worked for Joseph. Um, next point: disorganized people often waste time because they have no plan. All right, when you're just kind of reaching for this and this, and I'm not sure which direction to go, much time is spent and burned uh, being directionless and motionless. Okay. Um, organizers next apply their gift of planning to any task they face. All right, they're going to lay it out first. They're going to see the big picture, and then they're going to break it down into bite-sized chunks, and then have a plan of action to accomplish that task. So, uh, rulers are motivated and responsible. What was Joseph's motivation? Well, he didn't want to starve. Okay, um, he wanted to make sure that he lived. He wanted to make sure his sons lived. If, if, he's good, if he's calling Egypt home now, remember he says, I'm, for, I'm forgetting my father's house. In his mind, it's over. I'm, I'm here now. I'm Egyptian. I'm going to save my people. You know? and, and, if, and if we're a ruler, if you're a ruler, we need that motivation, that responsibility to, to help us to accomplish the task of the Great Commission or, and whatnot in the church. Uh, number six. Number six, gifted rulers identify resources to reach their goals. Back to Nehemiah now, uh, chapter number two. And really, the Bible is so full of, of great leaders that God used, but we're back to Nehemiah now in chapter two, verses, number, verses five through nine. <clears throat> the Bible says, And I, Nehemiah, said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. And the king said unto me, for the queen also, the queen also sitting by him, for how long shall thy journey be? And when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. 
Moreover, I said unto the king, If it please the king, let letters be given me to the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. And a letter unto Asaph the recorder, Asaph the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace, which appertain to the house, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. Okay, so gifted rulers can identify resources, resources uh, to reach their to reach their goals. Letter A: Nehemiah knew the obstacles that would be involved in rebuilding the temple, and he was able to tell the king exactly what he needed to overcome overcome the obstacles. Nehemiah thought it through. Nehemiah thought it out. He knew what he needed. He knew the timber that he needed. He knew the, the bricks and th the things that he needed, all the stuff he needed. He knew, and he, and he made sure that he got those things uh, from the king. You know, the king says, what do you need? How long do you need? And he says, I need this much time, and I need this many resources. And he knew where to get them. He says, could you write a letter for me? <laughs> you know, to write, to send it to the governor so they know that I'm not just asking them, that you're asking them. And so um, he, he utilized that resource. In that favor that God had given to him. Letter B, rulers always think in terms of resources available to them and stay informed about the status, status of those resources. Okay? Um, they, know, they like to know what's available. You know, they like to know who is available. You know, you, you want to be careful if you don't mean what you say when you say, hey, if you ever need help paying for something, let me know. Like, if you don't really mean that, I wouldn't say that around a, a, an administrator because they're going to remember that and they're going to come to you and say, hey, you remember that time when you said you would like to uh, help? I have something. And you're like, oh, oh I was, uh, you know, you better have something ready to be careful. But they remember those things. They, they remember uh, if someone says, you know, I have um, some items that would help with the, you know, with the next Christmas program. If you need, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, you can have it and, and they remember that, okay? They know where stuff is. They know where to get it. They, they know uh, who to talk to. You know, they're, they're good at remembering those things. Now, they're not out to use people. They're not out to use people uh, for their own purposes, but they want to get something together for the Lord. You know, they, they, Nehemiah wasn't trying to use the king. He wasn't saying, well, if you could really, you know, you know, make sure we got some good, you know, beef steak and stuff. <laughs> he wasn't laying out for his own purpose. Maybe some silken garments, you know. No, he was making sure that the things that they gathered were for uh, the rebuilding of the walls, rebuilding of the temple, rebuilding all, of all those things. And of course, they're not bashful to ask someone to help with the Lord's work. Okay, and it doesn't just mean finances. It may just, it may be resources of wisdom, advice, manpower, you know, um, or whatever, but they can identify resources to reach their goals. Number seven. Number seven, a ruler has the spiritual insight to know what can and can't be delegated. Delegated. Um, they know what can and cannot be delegated. Okay, uh, look at Nehemiah um, chapter number seven. And let's just look at a couple verses here just to get the idea uh, of something Nehemiah did. Nehemiah 7, 1 through 2 says, Now it came to pass when the wall was built, and I had set up the doors, and the porters, and the singers, and the Levites were appointed. Notice what it says here, that I gave my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem. For he was a, for he was a faithful man and feared God above many. So Nehemiah knew how to delegate authority. When it came time to, to set up someone that could be in charge of the city, he knew who to put in charge. He wasn't going to put you know, the 12-year-old the in charge. He was going to put somebody who was faithful, feared God, and says, I, I, I know you're responsible. I know you're trustworthy. I'm going to give this to you. And he delegated that, uh, delegated that authority. In other words, he gave it over. Uh, delegate means to appoint or tell someone to do it. Um, or say, I think you can do this, so you, you step in the job. Or I, I think you're the best you know, floor mopper, so you, you mop the floors. Um, and, and, or you lead the, the team of floor moppers, right? Okay, whatever. Um, but letter A, they work, rulers work through leading others. Others. Their work is leading others. It's not laziness. 
<laughs> it's it's not the uh, the Western mindset of the inclination that we're supposed to hate our boss for some reason. Um, if we didn't have a boss, we wouldn't have a job. We wouldn't know what to do. Okay, so. But rulers work through leading others. That is their work. They do other work, but that's that's something that they're good at. Letter B, they pay attention to which gifts other people have and who would be best, best uh, to handle certain areas. Okay? Um, so they're the ones, they know, they may know your gift before you do. <laughs> okay? If you're still searching, um, you know, an administrator might be the one to come along and say, hey, yeah, I think you have this gift because I've seen how you, you know, can comfort people. I've seen how, uh, how you have the spirit of work in you. I see how you're you're good at encouraging people and, and just saying things just the right way to uh, to to get people to to be encouraged. Or I I see how you're very firm and how you're very strong in God's word. And you you know you got the prophet type in you. Or maybe you're a good teacher. Could you teach this class? And so um, they they understand and pay attention and and maybe mentally file those things away. You know. Um, and a point I like to make here is this, when we allow someone we've identified with a spiritual gift, you know, whether you're an administrator, whether you're just leading an administrator or something, when you allow someone you've identified to have a gift, to do a job for himself or herself, that, that allows that person to flourish in their talent. So an administrator notices a good teacher. You know, you're good at studying. They, they notice how you're always having some factoid <laughs> to say or something like that. An administrator could look at you and say, um, I want you to teach this class. Now, you may be scared to, to death to think, oh, no, I don't think I could do that. But the ministry is trying to get you to do that job because they know the exercising of your gift is the way to bring it out. And the exercising of anybody is the way to, to grow, to, to get in shape, okay, whatever. One, uh, one of the markers of having this gift is to know the gifts of others and know how to lead them to success, Okay, so they understand, you know, what your role is in the church, and they say, well, this is what you can do uh, to help us to succeed and, and grow in God. Letter C. Uh, letter C. The more rulers delegate, the more they can concern themselves with administrating. And, and delegation and fits more in line with putting someone in charge of something. All right. So there's a there's a class of uh, new bus kids coming to church. Okay, and we need someone to to take charge of that class. Uh, the, the administrator would find someone who's good with kids, who has patience, who's, who, can, who can be trusted to teach, you know, whether or not they have the gift of teaching, but they can teach, you know, and say, listen, could you be in charge of this? Because if the, if the administrator, the ruler has to, has to handle that and maybe handle preaching an adult class and then handle uh, cleaning up the church and then handle, um, you know, taking the offering, can you imagine like a one man band type setup with a pastor trying to do everything? Um, delegation allows the administrator to make sure that everything is running well behind the scenes. Um, they're the supervisor, if you will, someone who's actually productive in supervising. Um, point underneath that, uh, underneath letter C there, Nehemiah motivated the people to build walls. So he wouldn't have to build them by himself. I mean, if Nehemiah just went on his own motivation, but didn't motivate anyone else, then he would have been a long time building those walls. Uh, but he got others to, to build them as well. And he could spend a lot more time administrating, a lot more time making sure that the enemies weren't getting in, a lot more time making sure that everything was right when people took the responsibility for their section of the wall. And that family took responsibility for their section of the wall. That, that administrating ability was able to shine and, and, and do well there. Now, truth be told, um, even if we're not an administrator, maybe, maybe parents or uh, anyone leading anything, it takes you longer to train someone how to do something the way you want it done than it does to just do it yourself. Um, but really, you'll never reach your potential as an administrator that way. You'll never reach your potential. They'll never reach their potential that way, either. But if we'll take the time to 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 teach, you know, maybe our kids or our, our you know, take the time to teach the teenagers in the church before we uh, maybe get onto them about something, maybe show them how we want it done, and 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 carefully take them through it. And now it'll take longer because they'll make their own mistakes. 
It'll take longer because, well, they'll do it in a way that they know how to do it. And if we'll take our hands off of it, let them make the mistakes, guide them through the process, teach them, train them. Yes, it takes maybe 10 times as long as it would be to do it yourself. But at the end of the day, one day, it'll result in a competent individual that can handle that job that you can say, hey, can you take this and then take care of it? And you can take your hands off it and go handle something completely different. And more work can be done for the Lord. More, we, more uh, can be accomplished in your own home and, 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 and good things can happen. So I, I would encourage you to take the time, even if it's painful, even if it's you know, patience is not your strong suit, to take the time to teach our kids, our teenagers, maybe another adult, maybe a friend of ours, how to do a job that you do well yourself, but teach them how to do it. Um, and that will certainly be a, a benefit to you in, in the long run. Uh, you'll, you'll feel a sense of accomplishment in teaching someone how to do something. But also, you'll know I have now a new resource, I, somebody I've trained, somebody I've taught, um, and how valuable that will be. Well, that's going to be the end of our lesson for today. Thank you for, for, for tuning in. I hope that, um, we <clears throat> that what we've covered so far would probably tell you, you know, that you've got the, the, maybe if you have the gift of administration, but I hope you'll tune in next time, uh, next week, and uh, hear the conclusion of this lesson. And I uh, pray the Lord would bless you, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. God bless you. Bye-bye.